Affairs. The White House Office of Intergovernmental Affairs is the principal White House component responsible for developing and maintaining relationships with the full spectrum of elected leadership in the United States, including state governors, attorneys general, local county commissioners, sheriffs, among others, and for my part, with the designated tribal leadership uh, for, for all 574 fairly recognized tribal governments. I began this job in July of 2019, and I assure you the past eight months feels a little bit more like two years, um, both due to the intense intensity and breadth of projects and issues I get to work on on a daily basis, but also due to the amount of successful accomplishments that we've been able to achieve in a relatively short amount of time. I, I think it's kind of funny, when I first arrived at this post, I consulted my own tribal leaders and mentors about how to succeed in this position, and one of them told me, slow play my hand, don't say anything too stupid, and uh, don't stick your neck out right off the bat. But um, he was the only one that had that opinion because um, I hit the ground running and we've been running hot ever since then. So um, a, a few short weeks after my start in uh, July of 2019, Chairman Barrett, Barrett and the uh, Citizen Potawatomi Nation graciously hosted myself, members of the Domestic Policy Council, and the Fish and Wildlife Service to announce revisions to FWS policies on eagle feather retention. Under this new policy, tribal governments may now receive a permit to retain eagle remains found within their lands and to redistribute those remains at the as the tribe deems appropriate without turning those over to the National Eagle Repository, where disposition of those often takes several years, as you know. Rolling into September, we coordinated with both the Department of Energy and the Department of Interior on two separate infrastructure for Indian Country summits focused on the energy and broadband sectors, respectively. These two events were well attended by tribal leadership and featured engagements from FCC Chairman Ajit Pai, who announced tribal spectrum priorities set aside to allow exclusive access for tribes to acquire licenses to serve their lands. We also held an exclusive tribal leader engagement with Vice President Pence and senior officials of the Department of the Interior and the Department of Energy at the White House to discuss tribal energy and infrastructure development. We kicked off October with President Trump securing the commitment of President Salim Nishido of Finland to return over 600 items of cultural patrimony and remains to an assembly of over 26 pueblos and tribes with cultural heritage in the Mesa Verde region. These items and remains had been lost to their rightful ancestors for over a century and supported by the dedicated efforts of the National Park Service, tribal historic preservation officers, and career staff at the Department of State and the Department of Interior, President Trump worked with President Ninishto to execute a joint statement of agreement to return the remains to the United States and ergo to the Pueblos and tribes to whom they rightfully belong. In November, honoring both Native American Heritage Month, National Veterans and Military Families Month, Veterans Day, and for my fellow Marines out there, the Marine Corps birthday. Uh, we hosted the first White House conference on supporting the contemporary Native American veteran. Four cabinet level secretaries, including Secretary Wilkie of the VA, Interior Secretary Bernhardt, Labor Secretary Scalia, and then Acting Small Business Administrator Chris Pilkerton, were proud to host an assembly of over 200 Native veterans, active service members, tribal veteran service officers, and their family members. The conference, the conference focused specifically on post 9 11 Native veterans and discussed VA benefits, health care, housing, employment and business and workforce development. One short week later, in November, we hosted eight tribal leaders and community representatives in the Oval Office with President Trump to sign Executive Order 13898, establishing Operation Lady Justice. The task force is the culmination of multiple efforts across the administration to focus on this critical subject and build upon President Trump's proclamation of May 5th as National Missing and Murdered American Indians and Alaska Natives Awareness Day. As you know, the Operation Lady Justice Task Force is kicking off and we're hosting our first engagement here this week. Uh, the White House will be a consistent participant in that effort, and you can expect to hear from us reaching out to you and your community, communities on this very critical issue. Over December and January, we've taken a keen focus on supporting the Department of Justice to complete their inquiry into the IHS Task Force, under the IHS Task Force. U.S. Attorney Shores, a Choctaw citizen himself, and his team have conducted a thorough examination of IHS practices and policies 
The task force has made substantial findings and recommendations to ensure the safety of children in the care of IHS facilities and personnel. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention President Trump's enactment of three key Indian country bills. One, to expand and promote native language education, to provide for the equitable compensation of the Spokane tribe of Indians, for their interest in the property upon which the Grand Coulee Dam was constructed, and most of all, to welcome the Little Shell tribe of Chippewa into the family of federally recognized tribes. I don't know if Chairman Gray is here, but um, please extend to him my congratulations and let him know that at his soon's convenience, I will be very happy to host him at the White House. So I, I want to take a brief sidebar for a moment on those three bills and the conversation that ensued um, when President Trump tweeted out his support for Indian country. And I say Indian country, capital I and capital C. Uh, I want to mention this because this was honestly one of the prouder moments I've had since I began at the White House. Because the question was whether Indian country was an appropriate term for the president to use. Of course, we use that term regularly in our work, in our lives, in our communities. And even though it is a statutory defined term, I want to thank NCAI for clarifying the usage of that term in their public press release after the president's tweet. But clarifying the political correctness of the term was secondary to the real accomplishment that we all achieved together. And that was that we brought awareness of our reality and our issues in Indian country to, the segment of, to a segment of the population who is unaware, regardless of what political strike they may be. That tweet was liked over 120,000 times, and it was retweeted over another 20,000 times. And every time it was viewed, paired with your support for the message, we said, if I can take my White House hat off for just a moment, we, as indigenous people, will decide what we will be called ourselves. Oh. And I, serving in this position, just feel incredibly fortunate that we were all able to do that together. So, looking ahead to 2020, our policy approach for Indian country at the White House will remain the same. When I arrived at the White House, my leadership and I endeavored to identify policy priority categories rather than policy outcomes. Those categories are cultural resources, economic development and rural prosperity, education and workforce development, energy, infrastructure, public health, public safety, and veterans affairs. The purpose of placing our focus into these broad categories was to maintain flexibility, each of these categories are part of the administration's broader policy goals, or they are at least closely aligned. But rather than prescribing a specific outcome beforehand, we wanted to identify specific goals as they naturally occur within the administration by our engagements with leadership and stakeholders such as yourselves. We want to focus on how we can incorporate tribal-specific interests into the natural broader administration priorities. So, in closing, let me give credit to my leadership at the White House. I will tell you that when I came on board at the White House, I was overwhelmed with the amount of support that my leadership provided me. Doug Holscher, the Director of Intergovernmental Affairs, Joe Brogan, Director of the Domestic Policy Council, Jenny Lichter, Deputy Director of Domestic Policy Council. Many of you had an opportunity to meet these individuals and get to know them a little bit, but I really want you to know that when I arrived, they never said, here's what we want from Indian country. In fact, at no point have they treated tribes or Indian country like political pawns. Instead, they simply asked, how can we help? And that's where you come in. I'm just one Indian, and I only pretend to know it. I can't do this job without you, and I came to this position to listen first, to listen to you first. So this is a little bit of my signature here. 202-881-9014. I look forward to working with you to see if we can get a couple more wins for 2020. That's 202. You're right there. 202 881 9014. Mado, 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 Mado